The abilities you have in this game take some getting used to, and justifiably so. I mean, these things are incredible feats of game design and engineering, and that all comes at a price. Strange product to offer, but to each their own. The Ultra Hand ability is ingenious, and a miracle it works as well as it does. Being able to grab and manipulate objects, sticking them together to other things to create whatever you can imagine, all without the game fucking exploding. That's a miracle, but it makes sense, because instead, it is I who explodes. Ultra Hand is so damn funky, man. Just trying to rotate an object exactly how you want is so hard to get used to, and when you stick an item together and want to unstick them, you have to wiggle the right stick. Why? I get you're trying to convey the feeling of actually unsticking something in real life, but there are a fair amount of buttons not being used when you have Ultra Hand enabled. Why can't I just hit one of those instead? And the act of sticking things together can be kind of finicky. Man, either I'm bad at this game, or this ability can be pretty clunky sometimes, and I'm bad at this game. But let's talk one of our other new abilities, Fuse. Much like how you can attach objects together with Ultra Hand, you can attach pretty much anything in your inventory together to create stronger items or give them different properties, which opens up so many doors. Uh, let's attach something to an arrow. Why is this more cumbersome than my taxes? Which isn't saying much, but still. Fusing a material to an arrow you've drawn is done via this menu, which is just every single material you have in a single file line. It works, it's easy enough, but you collect hundreds of materials in this game, and there's so much empty space on the screen, you cannot tell me this was the best solution here. And you know what's crazy? This is one of the best ways Fuse is implemented. Because if we want to fuse our sword or shield with anything in our inventory, you can't do it like with arrows. No, 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 no. You have to select the item in the pause menu, hold it, drop it in game, select fuse on your ability wheel, and then combine it with what you're currently holding. Well, <laughs> son of a bitch, I had an open 15 seconds of my schedule to fill in there. Thank you, Tears of the Kingdom. Why do I have to do all this? It should be as simple as selecting the item in your menu and hitting a fuse button. Oh, that's basically how it works for arrows. I get they want you to fuse with items on the fly when you find them in the world, and the ability works well in that scenario, but using it in menus with arrows without having to select the ability while not being able to use it in menus with everything else and needing to have fuse selected while doing it is inconsistent. It's clunky. I've lost many a material dropping it in the world to fuse with and oh, it probably fell off this clip. <laughs> what else are cliffs for, right? Let's try this again. I want to fuse a rocket to my shield. <laughs> uh, there's an enemy nearby. Let me take care of that. that son of a bitch. Now these abilities are selected by holding down L to access this wheel containing all these special little things we can do like map. Damn, this game has abilities through the fucking roof. Did you hear what you can do in Tears of the Kingdom? Uh, you can boot up the game. You can press start. You can sit there after pressing start. Why does this wheel have so much filler? Why is the map here when I can more quickly access it by hitting minus? Why is Amiibo here when you can just put that in the pause menu? Like, when are we gonna need that at a moment's notice? And these being here increases my baffle output tenfold when there are so many things that would benefit from being selectable this way. Take, for example, the Sage abilities, your reward for beating the temples. And what a reward they are. Congratulations, you saved the world. This was cool. During my first temple, I found having a companion with a special ability to be really useful and wasn't looking forward to completing it and having to go back to how things were before. So to get the spirit of that companion as a reward and effectively having them by my side throughout the rest of the game was a treat. But then you get another and another and another. And when you have all of them following you around and they clog up the screen, it can be overwhelming, but that's not even the half of it. To use their abilities, you have to walk up to each of them manually and hit A. But since these are computer controlled companions, sometimes they're not where you want them to be, or they're actively running away from you, or another one butts in front of the one you want and you activate the wrong ability. Uh, having these guys follow you around and fight with you is nice. It makes the adventure feel less lonely and their abilities can be very useful. But this is Clunk 101. Did you ever go to Clunk School? Open this jar. They did. You can turn each sage on or off from the pause menu. Though their abilities are so useful at a moment's notice, I'm willing to put up with said Clunk to just have them around at all times. Though if they were a part of the ability wheel, it would be much easier to warn doing this. I don't know. This game just made some funky decisions with its interface. 
Speaking of which, spot the difference. Uh, yeah, this one's on the left. After waiting over six years, I was definitely excited to see what Nintendo did to address many complaints and issues with Breath of the Wild while also improving the overall experience. Apparently the guy for that was out. Yeah, when I look back at the complaints I had and the complaints others had, Tears of the Kingdom doesn't really fix much of this. It's pretty much Breath of the Wild, warts and all, with a big fat layer of new stuff laid on top of it. The user interface looks identical, and while it's functional, I think a redesign would have gone a long way. We're already reusing so much from the previous game here, that the least you could do is choose a different font. The inventory and map screens at least saw a few tweaks, but not enough to feel all that distinct or improved. In fact, the only thing I originally thought they changed was the color here. The graphics? Practically identical. I mean, from a technical standpoint, yes, they've made improvements, and while there's impressive tech and hard work behind them, it's all pretty damn subtle in practice. Without looking up the dirty details, this looks the same. Speaking of looking the same, that was my problem with the shrines in Breath of the Wild. When you have 120 mini dungeons to complete and they all look identical, it can become a bit grating. And in Tears of the Kingdom, thankfully, they gave us new interior and exterior designs for the shrines. For this game, every shrine still looks the same. What a lineup! Weapon degradation? Something complained about to no end previously. It's still here. Hell, it's even worse! Pretty much every sword you pick up now is rusted, meaning they last not. But this is to incentivize you to fuse your weapons to make them more durable, which in practice, I mean, sure it works, but when you have to give us pretty much nothing but rusted weapons on the surface to get us to do it, it doesn't end up feeling like it makes a huge difference to me. But you can also repair your weapons by going up to Octoroks, dropping your weapon, having them suck it up, spit it back out, it'll be brand new, and often have a status buff. And how did I learn to do this? I didn't! This is such a hidden feature. You would only discover it by accident on your own, and you can only do it once with each Octorok. So what, this solves everything? Well, head down to the depths. There, you can find non-rusted weapons, but goddamn, I gotta do all this to get more than five hits out of a sword? I always appreciated weapon degradation. I felt it pushed you to be creative and act on the spot in combat once a weapon broke, uh, forcing you to try all the weapons in the game rather than sticking to only a handful. And with the introduction of Fuse, this is pushed even further. Now, it's all about this. A weapon about to break? Experiment, combine it with something to keep it alive for just a bit longer, and hey, you may discover a great weapon setup that way. I think this is all ingenious but it doesn't really solve my problem with weapon degradation. I just wanted them to last a little bit longer. Now, they last shorter by default, and I gotta do all this junk for them to be usable past like one enemy. This solution is perfect on paper. It keeps the game balanced with breakable weapons while offering a solution that still promotes experimentation. But because 95% of the weapons are rusted and on average last shorter than Breath of the Wild, I feel like we're sort of back where we started. Climbing in the rain is still a no-go, though you can find clothing with slip resistance. Much like how I found this bulletproof vest. Well, this doesn't do a damn thing. I just feel like Tears of the Kingdom doesn't really improve on much from Breath of the Wild. Rather, introduces a ton of stuff which can, in theory, improve issues from that game, but those issues are still there, and if they actually end up improving them, it's a bit situational sometimes. 